using documents only recently discovered, we are able to look at a simulation battle that took place on a village between eight completely unknown commanders. Brought to you by Ironcast, this is Operation Headstrong. Now, why that name? Uh, well, because I have a headache. And I thought maybe the new and improved sound mod you know, might make me feel better. As for our players, the conflict may make their heads ache and butts possibly hurt. So let's introduce them as quickly as possible. On the left, we have Morozov playing for Team Axis. Next to them is Stopa in the center, Die to Live. And on the far right is Keanu. And already I can see something interesting going on. Uh, it's a truck. Now, what might that be doing? Before we introduce our beautiful players on the enemy team, I'm seeing grenades pop over the roof. Promotions are occurring. And a truck which is just plopping out SMG soldiers. Zergmaster has got something totally new in mind. Now, this is where you want to be dropping infantry, but I am surprised. Oh, double crush and veterancy for that truck driver, which I think at the moment the UK has a lack of truck drivers, resulting in food shortages as product. I mean, this is irrelevant. That's a third kill. But I don't think they want truck drivers, which I have, you know, on, on the resume. I can run over people. What I would be impressed by is if you could shoot the truck before it ran over the people. That would be kind of nice. I'm, As I was saying, honestly, it shouldn't have got that far. The infantry light fire would have damaged that truck, you know, shoot out its tires. The damage detail is pretty high in this game. So, <clears throat> let's return to introducing our allied players. We've got... I hear a uh, AT rifle. There it is. It is uh, firing through the sandbags at poor little Vinny over there. In comes a shoe car, and that AT rifle should have no problem dealing with it. It just requires the angle. Unfortunately, this hill here is kind of acting like a shot blocker. Uh, shoe car reversing is not as fast as man sprinting. There we go. Looks like it's able to take it out fully. Yep. No problemo. Okay, so next to Vinny is Kenobi. Yes, General Kenobi. And hopefully if I can find the other players. Uh, on the far right, we have Venom, which is pretty cool movie. Looking forward to the, the next one, uh, which is called um, Venom 2. I'm going to have to go with. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Uh, and the last player is... Oh, yes, of course. Zergmaster! How could we forget? 234 is out on the field and it looks to be unrivaled so far. Axis holding the center point. No need to go further at this point and run into any unfortunate circumstances with AT rifles. It already feels like it's a little bit too far up and I mean, I guess they want to have some initiative with this because typically you don't want to ooh, charge out into enemy territory. Oh, this is a pretty good angle on that infantry squad and avoiding the Crusader tank, which appeared here. Veterancy is up. 234 having a wonderful, delightful time. Oh, it gets popped. I didn't see what popped it, though. Just, just magic. So far, the sounds are pretty cool. Uh, let me know what you think about the sounds. We have a Panzer 3J out here now as well, and the Crusader is no longer having uh, as much freedom as it thought it might have once that 234 was taken out. So already four minutes, 40 seconds in, quite a vehicular response. Some good direct control there from Zergmaster. Die to live is living to die on the point. Sounds almost like a saying. You know, just as a soldier draws his last breath, it's just like, we die to live and live to die. 
And then he just dies. Like, you know, it's pretty badass saying, but, you know, pointless in the long run. Lots of small arms fire on the left. Fire is kind of deceased in the middle. Whilst the Axis try and bring some forces up there, I can see some more squads popping up. Uh, speaking of popping, we got some smokes as well, but right side doesn't seem too interested in having much warfare, which defeats the purpose of this game. Someone needs some morphine. Oh yes, included in the sound mod is a lot more voice lines, so you might be hearing some new sayings that people are just uh, kind of gonna you know say when they get grenaded and stuff. Bazooka's down here. Special forces. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, do we have anything up on this hill so far? No, but we must have something interesting out here like a vet sniper or an officer to be calling down some additional ammo for what I think is the... or a machine gun. Yep. And then runs away from the ammo. I suppose he can find some more ammo in the 234. Panzer three, still trying to fully destroy that Crusader AA. Now this is a mostly Soviet or Russian forces. So three Russian players versus, well, three Russian players and UK. And I'm wondering if we're gonna see like a lot of guard snipers out. I suppose on this map, there is a huge lack of cover, so I feel like snipers can be fairly prominent, especially with the slight elevated angles. Although, this side of the map is much more favorable. The T-60 has utterly destroyed a lot of the sandbags and forces in this area. Unlucky with the bazooka. I felt like that was a, a huge gamble at that range. Panzer three should be able to respond to this. There we go. Oh no, it was the rocket! Morozov got in close. Red herring on that Panzer three. Surprise, nothing in play to be able to pop it in the back as it uh, retreated that. Um, ooh, hello. Churchill tank, very slow. Decently armored. KV-1, very slow. Even more decently armored. Actually, not too sure on which one's more armoured here, but I, I think the KV-1 withstands a lot more than the Churchill camp. And... I, I don't really... Ooh, nice shot with a bazooka, but again, like, as I say, the KV-1, very strong! You know, in my time of playing Assault Squad, I've had much more success with a KV-1. Uh, than a Churchill. Panzer three, looking like it's getting a nice angle. The KV-1 does notice it. Kenobi turns that turret, faces it. One shot, all it takes. Crew abandons. <laughs> Churchill's just slow as ever. You know, when it comes to comparing the speeds of these two things, I, I feel like the KV-1 wins. It's just two slow bricks snail outrunning a snail back in play Morozov is saying you know what you might have killed all of my troops with a t60 but there's more where that came from smokes are up sandbags are going down smg's finger on the trigger marines will oppose them but only a couple from what i can see I'm surprised uh, that there is a lack of defences on this left, but not surprised to see another T-60. Might have been the same T-60. No, it isn't. It's not the same T-60. The other one got blown up. <laughs> Hang on a minute. We got some, I think, anti-personal mines going up uh, on the top right. I don't think the infantry is going to be going that far. I would hope not. If they're stepping on mines that far up, you've probably lost the game. Is there any AT rifle out here? Because I don't think there's any vehicles. So it has to be an infantry solution. We do have a 20 million, 20 millimeter, but from this range, uh, I'm not sure about it. 
All these sandbags shut down. Infantry is laying down, trying to maintain a low profile. Meanwhile, on the right, it is just happy lullabies. We do have a T-60 moving on over there. Uh, the Churchill still figuring out what it wants to do in life. I understand the decision. It can be pretty hard. I wanted to be a musician. Now I feel... I, I, I don't know. I just don't know. Like... I still want to, but I can't. They won't let me. Not not since the accident. KV-1 still looking over on the left. Never figured out. There we go, veteran sniper. Might have been the one that dropped that. Uh, we got also a veteran officer hiding in this bush here. T-60 still having a wonderful time. Bringing up a Nashorn. Oh, this thing's illegal in most states. Now, the Nashorn tells me this is a match that is set on all units. The Nashorn uh, typically frowned upon in the competitive scene uh, because it has that giant Pack 43 mounted on it. It is a very powerful weapon. It has huge penetration. T-60 inflicting light casualties on the right, but where's that infantry over here to push with? I don't see anything, and the uh, Churchill seems to be having tricky finding some kind of relevant target to pop, and it's going to be even more struggling when this Nashorn shows up, because I think that Nashorn can take it out, especially uh, on that side armor. So I'm fully expecting that to retreat if it isn't just one-shotted. Takes a shot, it goes over. T60 uh, is destroyed by the Stug. We've got airdrops going down to resupply some of the out of ammo troops and more mines. Oh, I like it. Grenade trade. And that's a win for Keanu. Midpoint goes to the Allies with a KV1. I, I kind of feel like the Nashorn should probably just jump on over, take out that KV-1 whilst it's facing that direction. It is side armor vulnerable right now. Morozov... They are not letting up on this front. And honestly, I can't tell if they are really sort of winning against their opponent here. I mean, heavy casualties both sides. So long as they haven't lost more than their enemy, then that constant pressure is good. You know, if your enemy is always having to play on the defensive, then there's no chance that they'll take the point away from you. And sometimes you can lose a little bit more than your enemy. Sometimes. And that's still work in your favor. Because as long as your enemy feels too threatened to advance, they will never take your point. KV-1 still up and about. Once again, taking that position where its side armor is vulnerable. Nashorn, take a look at that, will you? It is still firing for that Churchill, which again, side armor facing. You are just taunting them. Here we go. Nashorn is now moving... That's a really delicious shot. Yeah, there we go. KV-1 in need of repairs if it will survive. Allies and Axis forces. Light fire on the left. Calm down a little bit now. So let's use this time to talk ever so slightly about the map. Ooh, the Churchill came out into play and I think the Stug... Got it. Now, this side of the map is pretty good on the right. Like, you have this hilly area. You have a tree with a veteran officer. So we got two veteran officers out here, so they can do a lot of spotting. But you can see that the Axis can create a pretty decent amount of defenses up here. AT guns, very nice vantage point. It doesn't just look over, you know, this area here, the factory, but it can, you know, with units that have decent amount of range, look over the central point as well. Really 
kind of say, hey, look, if you advance vehicles too far up, uh, we can probably take you from this hill. Some units in need of uh, resupply again. I'm loving the new resupply change, by the way, where you can actually just run units. Oh, taking the TNT out to destroy the KV. Got to be careful with that TNT inside tanks. You might want to take it for yourself to stop enemies from taking it and then blowing your tank up. That's a valuable lesson to learn. Good use of these T-60s. This one's Vinny's. Out comes a Daimler, which is charging straight into the middle. And I'm surprised it's getting this far. And it goes, runs over the sandbags, runs over the soldier. Will the T-60 follow up or is the T-60 just there to cover? Out on the field is a ho knee three and the Daimler is just wrecking it. Morozov will not be happy about this. Are there any soldiers, I don't know, which have some AT grenades? That could at least attempt to save. Oh, now it's turned around and it spots all the soldiers. HE shells. Running over the legs. Running over more legs. It is a leg happy Daimler. Oh. There was a shot scuffed. The Daimler almost bit its end. Runs over a few more soldiers, gets the sandbags as well. No rockets. No AT rifle. Run over the ammo. That's it. <laughs> Zerg Master really loving Zerg strategies because that's what this is. That truck at the start full of the SMG soldiers. Yeah, that's that's a six pool if I've ever seen one. But this car is too fast for any AT grenade to really catch it in the engine or a tire. Like, that's probably the worst thing that you can do on... I mean, besides completely destroying them, but taking out... Uh, the tires of a wheeled vehicle, it's not repairable. So they're pretty much dead at that point. Jumps out a crew soldier to try and decap the point at the back. We've got more soldiers out here. Any vehicles? See the uh, Stug there. With the shot. Now we got a 223 or 224? 222, that's the one. <laughs> uh, and a Chi He. Which manages to take the kill. I was going to say the 222, uh, yeah, it could take out a Daimler, but I think the Daimler is probably going to get the advantage in that one if it, at that range, anyway. Still trying to finish off this KV1. Look how tough and hardy it is. Do we still have the Churchill up? Uh, we've got a BT-7. I mean, th this is starting to look like a factory back here. The answer is no. There's no Churchill tank anymore. We do have a wonderful little officer. It would be wise to uh, group this up with a sniper. I don't see any sniper around here at the moment. But a sniper would do well to take out the people behind the sandbags and it's also very sneaky and, and like you don't really notice that if someone's firing uh like a mortar or anything that's explosive you kind of notice that your soldiers are being killed by explosions very noticeable but a sniper can be quite subtle you can like be focusing on another area You know, and say, oh, look, giant rockets in the middle. That's cool. I'll look at that. Oh, cool, a bazooka. I'll look at that. And then you turn over to your side of the map and you're like, hey, where's all my guys that I put behind sandbags? They were here just a second ago. And that's because a sniper has just been, you know, left to do their thing. Very cool to take out that Stug. With some arc fire grenade rifles from the British forces. Axis in control. The two, three, four, I think. It's pretty rocking here. Using this building as cover. V 
very important building that is. Uh, because it can't be fully destroyed. Like, the foundations will always be there. So it always offers some cover towards the lower end of your vehicle. Which ain't bad. Nashorn now on the left. Not too bad, actually, to maybe even stick the Nashorn up here. Just to try and get a shot on uh, enemy vehicles. Got a 85 there. Just got to be very careful not to swing your teeth through <laughs> your uh, two, three, four in complete broad daylight in the middle of the road, side facing. Yeah, that's, that's asking for trouble. We had a nice building here. What was wrong with the nice building? But as I was going to say, um, yeah, if you do pop your Nash on up here, do make sure that you don't go overboard with it because you want to pull this back after taking a shot. This kind of weapon has a very long reload time. You can see the T3485. Yup. It went straight back in. Took a shot. It's not exactly a low profile, that vehicle. BM8 firing down. Raining hell. But I don't think too many casualties were inflicted there. Now, the beautiful thing about the BM8 is it's kind of distance accurate and a wide spread. So if I were to draw like kind of the cone of fire, like a lot of uh, artillery is kind of like, you know, might be kind of like there, but the BM-8 kind of does this thin kind of thing. Maybe it's just me, but that's kind of what I've noticed. Maybe we'll see uh, later on that, that kind of spread. Infantry inside of the building, trying to get some good shots off on the Volkster. Very well played, Kenobi. Gets his head down. Got a priest on the battlefield now. Yep, some uh, guard snipers came out of that jeep at some point. Repairs going down. Interesting advance from the Chihi. 85 is down. Rockets. It is explosions galore everywhere. One tank for two. Not too bad. A lot of repairs going down as well. Tiger out on the field too. Is there any kind of vehicle that can retaliate against this at the moment? I don't believe there is. So, the Russians and the single Brit are going to have to sit tight before they can bring something onto the field to defeat this. This left might even fall now with a 222 push and infantry it is all looking good but the 222 is threatened by the t60 if the t60 can just get a shot before the vet tiger explodes it it cannot oh my god huge armor advances and rockets scuffing into the buildings i love it it is action many rockets in the center Man, that was crazy! I've never seen anything like that. Teamwork is happening. Just not on the right side of the map. <laughs> Again, these vehicles, what are they doing? We got a... We, we just... We got a couple of idle... Tank crew. I just don't see what they're achieving there. Tiger is now threatened. We'll find out what it's threatened by the Chiha 47 with some soldiers on the back. This is a huge push. They really want to get this point now. Oh, that's an IS-2 back there. Right there. Oh, I would not want to be a soldier on the back of that thing. I'm absolutely adoring how many rocket soldiers are out here at the moment. Covering much basis. But it seems to be mostly in the center, so the center two players kind of know what their uh, their rocket their rocket knowledge. We'll call it that. 
But they do get into the zone, this one soldier. is fighting the good fight. Vinny's man, holding strong. Allies have managed to get a little bit closer to the central point. Priest is firing. Oh, yes. Looks like it will eliminate the majority of this squad. But losing this point is pretty significant. Like, this should be the point to reclaim urgently. And I think... The IS-2, yep. It uh, needs to be repaired. We have... Aha! A, a worth get it. I don't know how you pronounce that. But it's just like a nebel worfer. That I can do. Venom's IS-2. Getting some additional tank crew to try and pop in there. They'll need that. That tiger, I assume, is the one that probably damaged that. There's a two face off. We got those AP mines there to make sure that nobody uh, just runs up and grenades the thing. If they step on a mine. And uh, they've got a AT grenade in their hand. That'll be quite the spectacle. So, BM-8, kind of rivaling the Schwerez Wolfgeralt. Get it. Get it. I'll just make it sound German. That's good enough. BT-7A. Oh, God, there's so much artillery getting out on the field now. And I haven't seen too many special forces from the Russians. I've seen Red Guard, but that's not... Not a special unit bite. Uh, what do they get? They get guards rifle. Shock troops. You know, those are pretty good. <clears throat> Second IS-2 is out now. Venom and Kenobi. What a team up. Against the Ved Tiger. Rockets out in the middle. I think there was... Slightly more wonder as to why this is facing in that direction. I mean, it was a wonderful rocket strike, but again, I'm not sure why that's facing that direction. So two IS-2s in need of repair. The Vet Tiger is really showing how strong it is. I didn't realize it was this strong. Smoke's going down. Artillery litters the battlefield and you can kind of see that arc spread as well starting to become kind of like no man's land not to be confused with the actual no man's land which no man has ever land in there if you catch my drift is2 advancing smokes cover the bed tiger very nice that's what we call tactics. Oh, and there is a 150 millimeter mortar back here too. Pretty well positioned, I'd say. You know, it can fire a little bit off to the center. Both IS-2s is just kind of looking over here. There's that tiger. Give me the tiger. Priest firing in the middle, a bit too far back. Oh! Yag Panther out, going over to the right, because there's so much action on the right to shut down. God, I'm sarcastic today. It's probably the headache. Was I always this sarcastic? <laughs> Although, do forgive me, when I say, like, the right doesn't have too much action, it doesn't necessarily mean that the players over there are doing nothing. They they definitely aren't. They're just focusing on the middle point. Uh, it can be pretty hard at times. Oh, direct hit on the IS-2! Oh, and the second IS-2 takes a shot from what I can only think was this Chi-Ri! Yes, 
The Japanese have their own heavy tanks. Who knew? I can't believe I've just seen two IS-2s eliminated in like a fraction, well, kind of more like of a second of each other. Now we need the Chi Ri to go up there, finish the task at hand, and if supported by the Ved Tiger, uh, which I think uh, had some turret damage by the looks of things, so it wasn't able to fire, but if it's got those repairs up and running, then it needs to go for these, because taking out two IS-2s would be incredible. 65 points to the Axis, 20 to the Allies. Let's secure the battle. Here comes the advance with infantry. I love it. Let's not rush ahead. Let's get those infantry in there so they can see around them. Even the officer moving up to try and get some sight lines. Veterancy being applied. Morozov gets his infantry going down to the point. But they are mostly being gunned down by the looks of things. It's a T-60. Oh, that was a big explosion. Does that mean it's a 203? Yeah, when you see that explosion, you kind of say, Oh, you know what? I might, I might back away from that. I wouldn't want to be caught in an explosion, and we are just waiting to see if that will be the case. I think it might have fired all its shots, so let's take a look. Uh, yeah, we've got a BMA. Uh, a 203 rather and a 203 we have two 203s that might be why we saw no guards rifles and shock and infantry i mean we definitely didn't see any special tanks out there those are a bit more noticeable but you can be understandable if you miss a guards rifle or a shock troops coming out i mean this definitely kind of helps the russians the Allies, I mean, th these can take out tanks. You know, most artillery, you know, struggles a bit. You know, I was very lucky that the IS-2 got took out by Rocket. Rocket's uh, artillery is much better at taking out tanks than just general artillery. But the 203s are a special case. You know, and speaking of which, Rocket artillery has to have, like, a direct hit. If it isn't a direct hit, then nothing. Chi Ri moving up, trying to find that shot on the T-60, but the T-60 is moving uh, not well enough. 80 grenades staggers the crew inside of the Chi Ri. Molotov on the engine, but it doesn't stick. Just facing its engine that way now. <laughs> Oh, it sees another target. It's the Crusader tank. Can't see the priest. The priest is in a pit of water. But the Crusader, it can grab. Just observing the damages dealt by the Chiri. Nice big lump of soldiers. Wow. That is, that is a lot of soldiers not doing anything. <laughs> Looks like it does manage to get the Crusader. Two or threes should be reloaded by now, I think. Even the Tigers advanced up here too. Along with a supply truck. We really need supplies that far out. I guess so, eh? Big armored push, two, three, four as well. You know, something that I'm kind of noticing in modern-day Assault Squad. Oh, the 234 is going for the 203s. Takes a shot. I think it's got this. I think that was an AT rifle firing in the back of it. Nice up close. There's one. Do they know that there is a second 203 out? Tiger and Chiri doing okay. I think that 234 thought that was there was only one. 
gets taken out by, I think, that AT rifle that just spawned. I think the Chiri has forgot that it does have weapons and opted to run over enemy soldiers instead. <laughs> Bad Tiger. Oh! No. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> is what I meant to say. So we still have A203, which has managed to escape the vision of the 234. They definitely could have got that, I felt. I did see some soldiers spawn, but, you know, from range, might have got it. Losing a Vet Tiger and a Chi Ri. Kind of, you know, I would almost say levels the playing field a bit, but at the same time, that was a heavy investment. I don't think that there's too much manpower, and there's definitely no special units uh, left for the Allies. Which I think the Axis probably still have a few uh, special unit points that they can bring out. Priest looking okay, but the Priest is not going to have enough like shots on things. It's It can only take out a small section of infantry at a time. And the allies are getting overwhelmed. 97 points. And the Axis still look like they're just ready to push. So, I think we say our congratulations to, of course, Morozov, Stopa TS, Die to Live, and Keanu. If you've got some cool replays you want to see casted and just I want to see, then let me know on discord.me forward slash Ironcast. That's where you are. This is the YouTube for Ironcast, or at least I think it is. Uh, and, of course, if you want to support the video editors and the crew behind it, uh, not me. I just do this because it's fun. Super fun. Uh, then you can go over to patreon.com forward slash the Ironcast. Because Ironcast was taken by probably a blacksmith. I hope. So, <clears throat> those are the things, those are the terms and conditions you have hopefully accepted and enjoyed this cast. My name is Anuki, and I'll see you for the next one. Thousand.